Did Harry Potter actually die? Hey, brother. Harry Potter, the boy who lived twice. Or, well, I don't know. Did he actually die the second time and then come back to life? Because <laughs> it was actually doing some digging and it turns out this is like the most searched for question regarding the Harry Potter series. And since we've never done a dedicated video about it, I thought, hey, let's try and answer it because uh, yeah, it's confusing. I mean, from my point of view, yes, Harry actually died at the end. But then looking at it from the other side, there are quite a few good arguments that he didn't truly die despite what he intended to do. And that is really what it might come down to. What Harry meant to do versus what actually happened because when he goes down there is a lot at play that we need to consider so without any further ado let's try and answer did Harry die hey brother I mean Harry is alive at the end right so the question is did he die and then come back to life or did he almost very nearly get as close to death as possible and then come back to life. Was any of the limbo stuff real or was it, as Harry says, just happening inside his head? Of course it's happening inside your head, Harry. Why should that mean that it's not real? Well, let's take it back to the very beginning of the story to find out if Harry truly died and what might constitute death. I mean, <laughs> it can't be that hard, right? Right. So, as we all know, as a baby, Harry survives the Avada Kedavra curse because his mother chooses to die for him and casts sacrificial protection. And it's important to note that this particular protection is not a one-time use thing. It remains active in Harry for the rest of his life. This doesn't mean he can't die at all. It just means he can't be murdered or touched by Voldemort specifically. Which is why, if you fast forward to the end of Philosopher's Stone, Quirrell can't touch him because at that moment, Quirrell is a Horcrux and therefore part Voldemort and therefore repelled by the sacrificial love. Now, cunning lad that Voldemort is, he almost overcomes this particular obstacle in Goblet of Fire when, after enacting just the most complicated plan of all time, he gets Harry to the graveyard. <laughs> but like, seriously, can you imagine if any common sense had been used at all here? Yeah, Big V. It's uh, it's me, Body C. Yeah, so I uh, I did the thing with the goblet. It, 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 Potter's name came out of it and everything. It just, well, I don't know what that. Uh, it turns out they're just gonna have him like start each task and then like immediately forfeit, so he's not really gonna like, you know, com like compete or anything. Yeah, I was pretty disappointed too. How's Wormtail? Anyway, though, in the graveyard, Voldemort takes Harry's blood into himself, which then allows him to touch Harry and even hit him with the Vada Kedavra, which is all great. He's overcome the protection, except he hasn't because he has now taken it into himself, thus preserving Lily's sacrifice and continuing to anchor Harry to life. So that's the first thing we have to consider when Voldemort attacks Harry in the forest, because if the protection is still active, then can Harry die? Another thing to consider inside the moment is the Deathly Hallows and where all of their loyalties presently lie. So let's start with the Elder Wand because it's, you know, the one the most in play since it's the one, you know, casting the spell. And in that moment, although neither Harry or Voldemort is aware of it just yet, Harry is actually the present master of the Elder Wand when Voldemort attacks him. Everything Harry reveals later on in the Great Hall about Draco having disarmed Dumbledore, Harry having overpowered Draco, and he himself now being the master of the Elder Wand is already true in the forest. And in the final battle in the Great Hall, it is this very fact that causes the Elder Wand to backfire and kill Voldemort. But so, is that same effect still in play in the forest then? Like if the Elder Wand won't kill Harry in the Great Hall, is that why Harry survives in the forest? Because Voldemort's not the master and the wand refuses to kill its own master? And then what about the other Hallows? Well, Harry is also master of both of them as well. Harry has of course always been the master of the cloak ever since Dumbledore gave it to him. He's the next in line after his father to own it and Dumbledore even confirms Harry is the true master. But the cloak I took out of vain curiosity, and so it could have never worked for me as it works for you, its true owner. 
And as for the resurrection stone, we know death's real trick with the stone is to lure you to death by making you desire your lost loved ones who are, you know, beyond the veil. That's what happens to the second brother, Cadmus, and in a way to Dumbledore, like his curiosity with the ring leads directly to his death. Avada Kedavra. <laughs> on the other hand, uses the stone to summon his parents and loved ones to purposefully escort him to death. That is how the master of the stone uses it. He who accepts death, one who is master of death, which if you're keeping track, Harry is. <laughs> he might not be holding every single hallow at the same time, but he is the master of death. So there it all is. That is what Harry's own death is up against in this scene. Voldemort is trying to use the Elder Wand against its master to kill the master of death, who is also tied to life by the blood in Voldemort. Harry means to die, but does he succeed? Yes. All right, guys, now I'm going to take a brief pause right there to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Shopify. Y'all know what's hard? Merch. I mean, there's coming up with design, there's finding what to put the design on, existential dread that you'll end up with a garage full of t-shirts that say, just state, you know, the group for encouraging squib tolerance at the education place. That's a true story. Turns out it was about as popular as the actual in-universe organization, SPEW. But you know what's easy once you've come up with that brilliant design? Selling merch on Shopify, which is exactly what we do here at SCB. It really is an incredible experience top to bottom. Like it's easy to add new products, track sales and inventory, find out what people are loving and what is a shirt that says just stay on it. I'm sorry, it was just such a bad idea. I don't know why we did it. I mean, I guess at the end of the day, it's a hilarious example I can bring up in this ad that we can all laugh about. <laughs> <laughs> but that is where Shopify's reports and data center comes in clutch for a small business. Like knowing your trends and what's working can be such a game changer. Point is whether you're selling branded merch, candles, coffee, or something of your own invention, Shopify helps you sell everywhere and gives you all the tools you'll need to do it no matter how big or small your enterprise. So sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com scb all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash scb now to grow your business no matter what stage you're currently at. Shopify.com slash scb. Link is in the description down below. At the end of the day, despite all the things trying to keep him alive, Harry does successfully die and then return to the world of the living. Let's break it down. First of all, being master of death, while it sounds like it would stop you from dying, as we said earlier, it means that you're able to accept death. Master of death, in a way, actually means able to die, master at dying even. Which I know, that's kind of like a weird way to think about it, but the fact that Harry is the master of all three Hallows is actually doing nothing to anchor him to this realm. But that said, two of the Hallows, the Cloak and the Stone, aren't even present in the situation we're talking about. The Elder Wand, on the other hand, is in, in the other... Voldemort has the Elder Wand. Thought you ought to know. <laughs> so, is it simply refusing to kill its master? No. The difference in the forest versus in the Great Hall is that Harry means to die and so does not defend himself. If Harry had raised a wand to fight Voldemort in the forest, then the wand would have indeed backfired right then and there and hit Voldemort. But then there's Lily's sacrifice living on in Voldemort, the love crux, if you will, to consider. Because if Harry is tethered to life via the love crux, and Voldemort is tethered to life via his remaining Nagini Horcrux, meaning Voldemort can't die, then Harry can't die, right? Did I do that math? Because then the other explanation would be that they both die and both come back to life. And I gotta say, that sounds wrong. Like, I mean, certainly Voldemort isn't pulling off the same miracle as Harry, is he? <laughs> No, don't worry, he's definitely not. It is a smidge complicated, but it all works out exactly the way you would want it to. Well, as long as what you want is for Harry to have died and to come back to life. Duh. But you might be asking yourself, how can that be? How can Harry be fully dead and in limbo and Voldemort be in limbo, but not fully dead? Well, it all has to do with souls and where they're all presently located. 
I'm not supposed to be here. But first, let's talk about our limbo area, King's Cross, an area I definitely think counts as an afterlife location. Because certainly, while Harry is there, he's not alive, right? And if he's not alive, then he's dead. What, like it's hard? But more and possibly better proof that this area counts as death is that, believe it or not, this is Voldemort's final resting place at the end of the series. Because in a story all about accepting death and recognizing death as a good thing, where your main villain fears death more than anything else, letting him experience death would almost be something of a mercy to him. But instead, when you see this little gross baby thing here, that's Voldemort, that's the big guy. It's not the piece of soul that was in Harry. That is Big V himself. The reason Harry looks whole and complete here is because his soul is whole and complete. Voldemort looks wretched and maimed because his soul is wretched and maimed. Either way though, this is what happens to him after the final battle. He doesn't get to go on to like a proper afterlife. He is stuck here forever, unable to help himself in a state of infinite suffering. But with that in mind, after the final battle, I think we're all pretty comfortable calling Voldemort dead. But if this is where he is, then it means that this counts as death. And so while Harry is in here, he is in fact dead. Are you sure about that? But, and here's where it gets a little confusing, in this moment, while Harry is there, and dead. Voldemort actually is not dead yet because he still has Nagini as a Horcrux out in the living world. So at that moment, part of his soul is still anchored in the living world, so technically Voldemort is still alive. Harry's love crux, on the other hand, is only anchored to this gross version of Voldemort that is in there with him. Which means that at that moment, Harry has no living part of his soul in the mortal world and is therefore officially dead. Voldemort is able to return to the mortal world from here because of his Horcrux. And because of the Love Crux, Harry is able to choose if he also wants to return, which of course he does. So to sum all that up, Harry does fully die and come back to life, while Voldemort only ever dies after the final battle and never returns from the dead. And then, if you need any further proof at all, you need to look no further than Harry's own proclamation in the final battle. I've done what my mother did, that protected from you. Haven't you noticed how none of the spells you put on them are binding? You can't torture them. You can't touch them. You don't learn from your mistakes, Riddle. And there it is. Harry successfully casts sacrificial protection on the defenders of Hogwarts, protects them in the same way his mother did, which was, by dying for them. If Harry didn't die, then the spell wouldn't be active, but it is. Boom. Harry died. <laughs> But guys, thanks as always for watching today's video. Don't forget to hit the like button and ring that bell if you haven't already. If you like this video, then you're gonna love this one right here. Or if you wanna see what might have happened if James had kept the invisibility cloak instead of giving it to Dumbledore, we have a huge five part series starting right here. But otherwise, Ben, until next time, I will see you in another Life Brother.